Because once, once I have purpose, I live life with a passion. Because I understand who I am and I understand where I'm going. And that un inextinguishable fire that God places on the inside of me, it can't be quenched because I have a purpose. Amen. And after I have purpose, after I have passion, I live life with perseverance. Mm. I learn how to persevere. I learn how to give my life, my, my life away. The song says, I give myself away. That's what it means to persevere. And we get that example from Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ came to this world, had he healed everybody on the planet and not gone to the cross, he still would not, would not have fulfilled his purpose. It was the cross that defined him. And it's your cross that's going to define you. Have you picked up your cross today? Are you walking according to God's purpose, plan, and will for you? Even though it might be uncomfortable at times. Everybody say purpose. purpose. Let us go to Joshua chapter number 10. We're going to read one, two, three. We're going to read four verses. We're going to read verse number 11. We're going to read verse 24 and 25. And we're going to read verse number 42. That's Joshua chapter number 10. We're going to read verse number 11. Verse 24 and 25 and verse 42. Everybody say, I got purpose. purpose. Say it like you mean. Say, I got purpose. I got purpose. And that's, that's the reason why the enemy is after you because you got purpose. And the, the devil wants to keep you from understanding what your purpose is. And when you understand purpose, you begin to live life passionately. And you learn to, to uh, persevere no matter what you have to go through in order to fulfill your purpose in life. Can I get an amen? amen? So, I'll be reading this for you because my, trans, my, my, my version is a little bit different. But it's in Joshua chapter number 10, verses 11, 24, 25, and 42. And verse 11, 11 says this, And it came about as they fled from before Israel while they were at the descent of beth -Haron, that the Lord, Lord have mercy, threw large stones from heaven owned them as far as Azekah, and they died. There were more who died from the hailstones than those whom the sons of Israel killed with the sword. Verse 11, verses 24 and 25. And it came about when they brought these kings out to Joshua, that Joshua, came, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the chiefs of the men of war who had gone with him, come near Put your feet on the necks of these yes, kings. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So they came near and put their feet on their necks. Verse 25. Joshua then said to them, Do not fear, be dismayed. Be strong and courageous. For thus the Lord will do to all your enemies with whom you fight. Verse number 42. <clears throat> and Joshua captured all the kings and their lands at one time because the Lord, the God of Israel, false for Israel. Lord. Lord. Amen. Title of the, of, of the message. <coughs> Killing kings and keeping promises. Killing kings and keeping promises. When you begin to really look at the book of Joshua, and, and I love the book of Joshua because the book of Joshua is a book that is uh, strategically placed in the Bible to show us what spiritual warfare looks like. And when you go into the New Testament, if you wanted to link the book of Joshua to a book in the New Testament, you would, look, you would link it to the book of Ephesians. Because Ephesians is the uh, revelation of what spiritual warfare looks like, while the book of Joshua is the actual illustration of what spiritual warfare looks like. Whenever you get ready to move into a new place, whenever you get ready to go into what we always, in, in, in Christian circles, uh, call the next dimension, the, 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 the next phase of ministry, look at the book of Joshua. Yes, yes. Because what you find out in the book of Joshua, you're not going to be able to shout over the promised land, you're going to have to learn how to fight in the promised land. Yes. And what happens, T, in the, in, in the promised land, 
Or prior to getting to the promised land, you have to go through the wilderness. And what the wilderness does, the wilderness allows you to go through a process of elimination. Because it's through the wilderness that you find out who you can trust. Yes, yes, yes. Lord. Yes, yes. That, that's where you find out who's for you and who's against you. Because God just doesn't uproot you after it. when he calls you. He doesn't just pick you up and place you in the promised land. He allows you to go through the wilderness. Yes. So you can begin to have discernment so you cannot be able to identify your Judas from your Peter. Yeah, all right, yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Lord. That wilderness separate folk. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we find out who Korah is in the wilderness. Yeah, yeah. You, you know how they shout about what they're going to, they, they ain't going to never leave you. They're going to always be there. And then when things get hot and heavy, you can't find it. Matter of fact, they, 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 they're trying to find a captain. To take them back to the place that they said they didn't, they didn't want to go back to. Yes, yes. So when you go through the wilderness, you go through a process of elimination. Yes. You go through a place where you are tremendously tried. Yes, yes, yes. And what's in you getting ready to come out. Yes, yes, yes. Even, even, even good leadership get tested in the wilderness. Yes, 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 yes. Even, even good leadership get frustrated in the wilderness. Yes, yes. Good leadership was put on display last night when Pastor Cornelius was telling us how when Moses came back down and heard him down at the bottom, down, down in the valley, doing things that they had, had no business doing, and he broke the very tablets that God had given him to deliver to the people because he was frustrated because of a group of people that had led the children of Israel in the wrong direction. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, don't get frustrated. Even as a leader, don't get frustrated. See, because Moses had a bad temper. Moses had a very bad temper. That, that, don't you know that there's certain things that'll keep you out of the promised land? Yes, 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 sir. Jesus. Moses could not go into the promised land because he had a bad attitude. <laughs> Love the Lord, full of the Holy Ghost, but he had a bad attitude. I don't know. Does anybody? <laughs> can anybody identify with Moses? Yes, so it's through the wilderness. Yeah. We go through the wilderness. We get to we go we get to go through the process of elimination. And as uh, the children of Israel were going through the wilderness, they had all of these different um, opportunities to really um, take that step they needed to take in order to fulfill God's will, purpose, and plan for their life. But they had when, when Moses sent out the twelve spies, two came back with a different report than the other team. And when you go through a process of elimination, you always have to make some tough decisions. Because really that's what leadership is all about, is making tough decisions. Because there's a difference between being popular and being effective. Amen. 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 Because if you are truly effective, let me tell you, you're not going to be popular. That's right. Yeah. Because what you do when you're affected, you bring challenges to people. Amen. Amen. You, you refuse to allow people to remain the same when you're affected. Mm -hmm. you, you cause people to check themselves and have them to face themselves in the mirror. No. That you cannot continue to live the way that you are living because God has greater for you. Somebody say, God has greater for me. God has greater. So when you're around affected people, affected people challenge you. Popular people tell you what you want to hear. All right. Glory. Glory. Amen. That was a good place to shout. Yes, sir. See, because they're more concerned. In order for me to remain popular, I have to make sure that you, you still think well of me. Yeah. Even though you shacking, even though you yeah. doing some stuff that you know you don't have any business doing, but you 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 want most people that are living any kind of way in the church, they come in the church with a spirit of intimidation on them. Daring you to say anything about the sins that they caught up in. No, no. I told you there's a difference between being popular and being saved. Yeah, yeah. The Levites were affected. When the Levites found out, or when Moses came down from the top of that mountain, and he saw what was going on in the valley, Moses made this one statement. He, he made this one declaration. He asked this one question. Who's on the Lord's side? Lord, Lord, Lord. And the Levite stood up. Yeah, yeah. And the Levite
Levites, the word of God said the Levites went through the camp cutting everything that was in defiance of Jehovah. And because of that, they became the, the, the royal priesthood that we know of, that Aaron and Moses came from. It was the Levites that separated themselves at that point when Moses came down from the wilderness. Somebody said, you're going to go through a separation. Go through a separation. separation takes place in the wilderness. That's where it takes place. It don't take place in the promised land. Amen. You know, we may find out that you've been slipping in the promised land, but you're going to pay for it. Yeah. Aiken? Mm-hmm. Because if you're running with a Joshua, Joshua expect to win. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So when Joshua comes to a place and he's losing, Joshua got a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like shouting. Yeah. Joshua, Joshua trying to figure out, hold up, I know I'm living according to God's purpose, plan, and will, so everything that I do is supposed to prosper. Yes, yes, yes. I'm supposed to win in everything that I do, and now that you done lost, something wrong. Yes, yes, Lord, you got to talk to me. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody say, talk to me, Lord. Talk to me. I, I, done, I done paid my tithe, I done gave my offering, I done been living right, I been, I'm a man of integrity, and you mean to tell me all hell done broke loose? Lord, you got to talk to me. Joshua was getting ready to fight the angel. He was all too upset. That's how, that's how intentional and intense Joshua was about living out God's purpose, plan, and will for him because he had already gone through the process of elimination in the wilderness where he had to wait 40 years because he was surrounded, surrounded by people that did not believe God. He said, ain't going to wait no more. I'm going to say, I don't wait long enough. You think I didn't come this far to start sleeping around? Are you crazy? No, no, no. You, do you think I've gone through all that I've gone through to go back to smoking? No, no. I don't come through too much. When you look at Joshua, dear, when, 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 when you begin to see how serious Joshua was about fulfilling God's purpose, plan, and will for him, Joshua was on another level. Joshua, his, his, his intensity was superior to Moses. Yeah. Because Moses hadn't gone through what Joshua had to go through. Mm-hmm. If you remember, they were, they were raised up totally different. Mm-hmm. Moses was raised up in the courtyards of, 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 of Pharaoh. Yeah. Uh-huh. But Joshua was down in the brickyards of Egypt. Look here. Joshua said, before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave. I remember what those brickyards felt like. I remember what those pads, I remember what those whips felt like. And before I be a slave, before I go back to that, I'll be, I'll be buried in my grave. So that was the reason why Joshua was so intense about fulfilling his purpose, plan, and will because he remembered what it was like to be like to be down in the brickyards of Egypt. How many of you remember what it was like to be enslaved or something? No, no, Talk to me. No, no, Are you crazy? To go back to what? No, go back to the club for what? Go back to the stove for what? Because a lot of times we have selective memory. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 We, 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 we like to pretend that everything was, we, we, I mean, like, like we had it going on all the time. It was, it was some, it was famines out there in the world too. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 You remember that? Yeah. You remember those, what, what you call them? Two, you two PQ call them drops. You're gonna come back. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna come into Christ and then talk about how good it was. You told you mean to tell me you were willing to sacrifice salvation over some leeks and some onions? Because uh-huh. you can't control your appetites. Because that's the reason why people are going back. They can't control their appetites. Appetites are out of control. Controlled by the flesh. They weren't talking about the whips. They was talking about getting back to the leeks and the onion, so that they would be they would have to submit to the whips because they couldn't control their appetites. 